Hey guys, today we're going to be working with VLOOKUPs, all right? Now, VLOOKUPs are going to be the gold standard of Excel functions. Why? Two reasons. Well, one, they're actually pretty useful. And second, hiring managers use them a lot to figure out if someone actually knows Excel or if they're just posturing, all right? Because VLOOKUP is the kind of stuff that you can't just pick up on your own. VLOOKUP is going to be a little bit complicated to get into and it's going to be complicated to know when to use it. So let's get started and you'll know everything you need to know about VLOOKUPs. It's going to be simple VLOOKUPs, cross-referencing tables, and approximate VLOOKUPs. All right, guys, let's get started with VLOOKUP. Now, VLOOKUP is really simple, as I said. The hard part is knowing when to use it. Now, VLOOKUP is pretty much for finding stuff about a particular item, all right? Finding stuff out about a particular item. That's not the technical definition and people are going to hang me for that one, but I want you to understand something. Say, for example, I always tell my classroom students, imagine that you had a phone book. Now, if I give you a name and I give you the phone book, you could come back with the phone number of that person. All right. Now, that search that you just did in real life is pretty much the equivalent of what VLOOKUP does, does in Excel. All right. Now, VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup. So right now, right here, I have a part number, K22613. And using VLOOKUP, I could find out the price, the seller, or the warranty. Why? VLOOKUP is going to grab this vertical table, this vertically aligned table, and try and look up stuff about the part number. Again, it could be price, it could be seller, or it could be warranty. All right? So let's get started. Let's see how it works. I'm going to head out over here, and I'm going to start by typing equals VLOOKUP, and open parenthesis. All right, guys. So uh, once I open the parenthesis, I'm going to head up here to where it says insert function. And I'm going to open up the function arguments window. All right. Now, this is just for when we're starting out. So that you know the helper. I mean, the VLOOKUP helper, what it's going to be about. Now, VLOOKUP is composed of four different arguments. The lookup value, table array, column index, um, and range lookup. Let's go through each of them. The lookup value is what it is that we're starting with. All right. The initial value, the one that was given to us. So the value that we're starting with is the part number all right now i know i want the price i know i want to find out the price for that part number but lookup value is what it is that we have at the start all right now i make so much emphasis in this because my classroom students always get confused and uh they usually go ahead and look out for the price right here in the table so they say it's k22613 let's go look for it in the table and click on the price you just defeated the entire purpose of the VLOOKUP, all right, guys? So at no point is VLOOKUP asking you to go search for something in the table. That's VLOOKUP's job, not yours. So let's get started. It's going to be this entire table right now. Notice I selected the titles. It's not necessary, but it's just a habit I created, and uh, it's not going to create any problems for you. A habit that you do have to create that is going to be almost absolutely necessary, I mean 99% of the time, is doing an absolute reference to the table, all right? How do you do an absolute reference? The exact moment you finish, you finish selecting the table, go press F4 on your keyboard, and notice how I get this little dollar signs in front of everything. That means that the table right now is an absolute reference, and that no matter where I drag the VLOOKUP to, it's always going to be pointing to the exact same table, all right? Now, for more on, VLOOK on absolute references, I have another video on that one. Now, call index num. This is the part where a lot of people get confused. Call index num is asking me for the column number, the column number where the data I'm looking for is. All right. So in English, that means that I'm looking for price. I'm going to go search for the column that has price. Now it's not column I, it's column number two. All right. Remember it's column number starting from the beginning of the table. So this is column one. This is column two. This is three and this is four. All right. Doesn't matter where the table is. Column number one is always the beginning of the table. So call index num, I'm looking for price. Price is column number two. There we go. And finally, range lookup. This one is going to lead to a lot of confusion. So right now I'm just going to tell you, like I tell my classroom students, press zero on the keyboard. All right, press zero on the keyboard, that's it. All right, zero means false, or in English, it means exact match, all right? So that means that However, the part number was, was written with any typos, any accents, any uh, spaces, anything. It's going to try and look for it exactly the way it was written right here. K22613, K22613 right here, 
And uh, so far, it seems to have to be an exact match because right here, notice where my mouse is, I'm getting a result. So that means everything was fine. Now, the alternative is an approximate match, but I'm going to talk about that way later when we're in exercise number three. All right, now let's press OK. There we go, guys. So we have our price, and that price is going to be $87 for that part. All right, now notice the following. If I were to change my number, VLOOKUP is automatically going to update the price, all right? So if the part number changes, I get a different price. Now, uh, let's select K22619 and stick with that. All right, guys, so now we're going to work with K22619. We have to bring back the seller and the warranty. So the seller is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a rehash of what we just did. However, instead of using the function arguments, the, well, the, uh, the function helper, I'm going to do it straight out in the worksheet, all right? Like real men do. So I'm going to start typing in equals VLOOKUP and open parenthesis. Now, notice how I have right here my arguments. They're the exact same thing as the function helper. However, I need to figure out what I'm typing right now. And I do that by looking at what is in bold. Right now, lookup value is in bold. That's, what be, well, that's what's being asked of me. So lookup value is going to be whatever is written in B12. Now, I'm going to press a comma. And notice that as soon as you press the comma, now the table array is bolded. So table array, I'm going to select everything up here. Remember, always do an absolute reference to a table where you need it or not is a good habit to have. Call index num. The call index num is going to be number three. And the range lookup is going to be zero. All right, guys, close the parenthesis. And there we go. The seller is... All right, guys, if you are done with, um, with the warranty, let's move on over to consumption prices. Now. Once we're here in consumption prices, let's get started. Consumption prices, we're going to see VLOOKUP's most common application, all right? Now, we started out with a single part that we had to bring data back about, all right? So the price, the seller, the warranty. But that's just a single item. That's not VLOOKUP's most common use. VLOOKUP's most common use in a company is cross-referencing tables. What does that mean? Let me, let, let me explain. We have here a table. We have here this table where um, we have a list of products that were consumed, all right? So say 80 sand, a Modelo beer, lemonade, uh, breaded sushi, whatever, all right? We have a grand total of 800 items, 850 something items that were consumed. Now, that's good, that's good enough. However, so if your boss comes back to you and says, hey, we have a list here of every item that was consumed, what was the total revenue or the total cost or total income to a restaurant? you're probably going to left a little bit, uh, I mean, you won't know what to do. Luckily for you, we have right here a reference table with all of the items that the restaurant sold and what their price and their cost was, all right? So, uh, how is this going to work? Well, if you don't know how to use VLOOKUP, how you, would you do it by hand? Pretty simple. First product to be consumed was a tisane. So, you go search for the tisane, I already know it's up at the bottom, and you say it was 25 bucks. So the price is going to be 25 and the cost is going to be 18. All right, so the cost is going to be 18. And there we go. And the income is the result of subtracting one from the other. Repeat 856 times and uh, you'll probably be done within eight hours. All right, so that's what you don't want to do. What you actually want to do is use VLOOKUP to replace all of that job, all right? To replace all of that work. So how would we go about that, doing that? Pretty simple, let's get started. I am going to select my price cell, follow along, G15, make it a little bit larger so that you guys can watch, and I'm going to start typing in VLOOKUP, open parenthesis. Now, I'm not going to use the helper right now, I'm just going to look at my little helper right here. So the lookup value right now is going to be the product. I always ask my classroom students, how do we know it's going to be the product? All right, how do I know it's going to be the product? Well, really simple. Product is the most granular uh, column that is shared between both tables, all right? If I wanted to look for the product price in this table, I wouldn't go look at the type. I'd go look at the product because type, well, there can be three types of baguettes or five types of, of hot meals or whatever. But to saying there is only one on the reference table. So that is why we choose product as a lookup value because it is a column that both tables share and it is the most granular column that, that both tables share. All right, next one, table array. Well, that's pretty simple. I'm going to be looking in this particular table. Now, as usual, I'm going to ask you, implore you, beg you to use absolute references 
for the table array. All right, notice how I pressed F4 on my keyboard and I got all of these little dollar signs up there. All right, comma. Now, the call index num, this is going to be pretty simple. The call index num is going to be, well, we want the price. Price is in one, two, three, column number three. All right, and finally, the branch will cup, we're still doing exact matches, all right? For exact match, it's either false or zero. Now, Sunsin explained to you what approximate matches are. They need their own topic. We're going to look at later on taxes and rates. All right, guys. With that, I'm going to close my parenthesis and press enter. And we get the price. All right, we got the price. Now, I'm going to autofill everything from this row on down. All right. Now, notice I got all my numbers correct. Why? Well, VLOOKUP works, but mostly it's because I did an absolute reference on this table. If I hadn't done an absolute reference on the table, here, let me show you what's going to happen if I hadn't done that. I am going to get a bunch of screwy numbers. So far, so good. It seems to be working, but as soon as I go down, notice how I get all of these errors, all the NAs. Why? Well, let's look at an NA. Notice how the table is already moved. Why? Because I didn't do my absolute reference, all right? Without the absolute references, the lookup table is going to move, is going to be moving along with my formula, and I don't want that. Again, absolute references are their own topic, a topic of their own, and I cover that in another video. All right, guys, so let's get back here. Now, if you feel uh, confident enough, you can try the cost on your own, or you can follow along with me. All right, cost, it's going to be really simple. Let's make, me, let's make this a little bit larger so you can watch. All right, VLOOKUP, open parenthesis. Uh, I'm, just let me make this a little bit larger. Sorry, guys. All right, VLOOKUP, open parenthesis. The lookup value being, once more, the product. The lookup array being this menu table. Again, absolute reference. The call index num being number four. And the range lookup being zero. All right, zero because it's an exact match. Column number four because it is cost. Close the parenthesis and drag everything down fill without formatting all right and finally the income it's going to be price minus cost all right so that's really simple now let's drag everything down just ignore this and um guys with that we are done we've used vlookup to calculate the price the cost and the income you can on your own get the total revenue the total cost and the total income that's just adding up this three columns all right, guys, so this is the most common use of, of VLOOKUP. This is the most common application of VLOOKUP. Eight times out of 10 when you're using VLOOKUP is going to be to cross-reference tables, all right? What do we mean by cross-referencing tables? We need to fill up one table with data that is uh, with data that is in another. That's it, all right? You try to do that by hand, it's going to take you like eight hours. You try to do that with VLOOKUP, well, I just did six minutes and I was explaining it to you, all right? Without the explanation and everything, you should do it in like less than a minute. All right, and finally, last but definitely not least, uh, approximate VLOOKUP, all right? Approximate VLOOKUP is not what you think it is. Exact match VLOOKUP is pretty straightforward. It's really simple, really straightforward. VLOOKUP is going to search exactly for whatever it is that, that you're looking for. Approximate match is not searching for something that looks like it. All right, let me explain. A hundred and, well, no, let's search for, I don't know, 80 grand a year. All right, $80,000 a year. I know that, that you, if you're in New York, that's poverty level, but whatever. So if I'm earning $80,000 a year, according to this tax table, which is not true, I should be getting charged 32% income tax rate, okay? However, Let's do a VLOOKUP to try and figure out what my income tax rate would be. Let me make it a little bit larger. And let's start. VLOOKUP, where the lookup value is this 80 grand. The table array is this one. Always absolute reference. And the call index num is number three. All right, because I want the tax rate and the tax rate is in column one, two, three. All right. Now for range lookup, I'm going to do an exact match. You know it's going to be wrong, but I just want to show you why. All right, so zero, exact match. Close the parenthesis. And there we go. I get a big fat NA back. Why? Because exact match means that it's going to be looking for $80,000 somewhere here and it's not going to find them, all right? At no point, there is no value here worth $80,000. Okay, now let's do the following. Let's do an approximate match. I'm going to correct this. I'm going to delete this zero and type in one. One means true, 
One means approximate match. Close the parenthesis and press enter. All right, I got an answer back. Why? Why did I get that answer back? Well, the approximate match, what it does is it does some sort of ranged lookup. What does this mean? Notice how, he, how here I have ranges. From zero to $496, you pay 2% tax rate. And from $62,000 to $150,000, you pay 32% tax rate. All right? So VLOOKUP searches within those ranges. It's going to try to find the next smallest number using an approximate, math, an approximate match and return the result from that next smallest number. So if I have $80,000 right here and I have uh, 62 grand, that is the next smallest number, all right? 250, that's way over bounds, and 32 grand, well, that's way too low. 62 is the next smallest number, and that's from whence the result is going to be coming back from, all right? So for approximate match to work, you need to follow the following rules. Well, the following rule, it's just one. Your table has to be ordered from smallest to largest, all right? Based on the lookup value. If the lookup value is the income, notice how here I'm ordering it from smallest to largest, all right? And once I've ordered from smallest to largest, then you can do an approximate match, all right? Rule number two, approximate matches only work for, um, for numbers, all right? For number type data, for numbers, for money, or even dates. However, it does not work for uh, strings, all right? For text. What do I mean? If I were to be doing, I don't know, keyboard, take the word keyboard, for example, I could do an, an exact match on that one, all right? If I were looking for keyboard in a table, in a dictionary, whatever. Most people think approximate match is going to enable Excel to do something like, if I had a typo, keyboard, like this, that approximate match is going to enable Excel to look for something similar to keyboard, like KY board. That is not the case. That is not even remotely near to the case. Approximate match is going to be searching for the next smallest value in a table that is ordered from smallest to largest, all right? So that is what approximate match does. Do, are you going to need approximate match in your life? Probably not. A lot of you guys are never, ever, ever going to touch approximate match. However, it is useful in replacing if the if function. Uh, more on that, we'll cover more on that way later on. And uh, it is useful if you're working with ranges, say, for example, salary ranges or statistical ranges or whatever, anything that comes in ranges, yeah, you're going to need an approximate match. But say, for example, you're an accountant or you're in finance or you're in HR. I mean, a lot of people that I know have gotten way fine along in their professional careers without knowing approximate match. All right. Well, guys, that's it about VLOOKUP. One last item that I want to note about VLOOKUP before closing the video is notice the following. In all three examples, the lookup value was at the beginning of the table. It's always the first column of the table, and that's a rule you can't get around, okay? So the part number, first column of the table. The product, first column of the reference table. The salary, first column of the reference table, all right? So if your VLOOKUP is not whatever it is that you're looking for, all right, guys? That is the one rule that you have to follow. And with that, yeah, we're done with, with VLOOKUPs. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, anything works. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from, or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer you. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video, and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course, and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better, when you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course, and also to our Power BI course all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. 
We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.